Greetings, YouTubers. I'm Rick, the tech enthusiast here with the next Elegoo lesson number 11, Membrane Switch Module. In this lesson, we'll become familiar with the Membrane Switch Module provided with the Elegoo kit and how we can use it with the Arduino for our projects. Buttons and keypads are commonly included in all sorts of projects. So we'll build and configure a simple circuit that's provided in the tutorial to demonstrate the functionality using the Arduino library. Then we'll create a sketch to connect the keypad using a single analog pin. So let's start building. The membrane keypad that's included in the kit is a matrix variety. The rows and columns of the keypad share common connections. This allows for the fewest amount of outputs in a circuit, eight lines total. When a button is pressed, the combination of connections and a little magic of programming tells Arduino what key is pressed. With a typical row of buttons or linear keypad, it would take up to 17 digital lines to do the same thing. The tutorial on the data sheet has some information on the membrane keypad module, but I'll include some additional links if you're interested, and I encourage you to check it out. For this lesson, we'll need the following items from your kit. The Eligu Arduino Uno R3 board, the membrane keypad module 4x4, eight male-to-male -male jumper wires. On page 86, you'll see the following schematic. What they're trying to convey is that the buttons share rows and column connections. On page 87, you'll see the wiring diagram. The keypad is directly connected to the Arduino board using jumpers. On page 89, there's a photo. Note, we're not going to use the breadboard. Okay, let's jump to the code. As before, we'll load the recommended sketch provided in the tutorial. Go to the file menu item, select open, and browse to where you save the Elegu files. Then under your language, code, under lesson 11 membrane switch module, custom keypad, and open the custom keypad.ino file. Looking at the code, you'll see that we'll be using the keypad.h library. Again, this was all installed with the latest Arduino IDE. My version is 1.8.5. Otherwise, it's available under the Elegoo tutorial files. To verify, go to the sketch menu item, select include library, you should see if you have the keypad already installed. If you need to add it, select Add Zip Library. Go to where you saved your Elegoo files, under your language, under Libraries, and you should see the keypad.zip. Select it and click the Open button. I have it so I'll hit cancel for now. Once you have it installed, you may need to restart your Arduino IDE. The keypad object class requires some initial setup. It needs to know the keys in a two-dimensional char array, the row pins and column pins in a byte array, and the number of rows and columns as a byte. The sketch starts with two lines that defines a row and columns as byte variables then gives them a value of four. Then it builds a two-dimensional array hexa keys, filling it with the values of all the keypad characters. Next, it defines the two byte arrays, row pins and column pins, and sets them to the pin values that the keypad is connected to. Finally, we have all the pieces to instantiate the custom keypad, keypad object class. The void setup starts the serial monitor. Simple. What I may have forgotten to mention in the previous lesson is that like other libraries, the keypad library performs all the pin mode setups that we normally do in a sketch. The void loop calls the custom keypad's get key method and passes it to the local char variable custom key. The if statement checks for a custom key value. If true, then it sends it to the serial monitor. Simple. Let's upload the code and try it out. All 
All right, let's open up the serial monitor and check out this keyboard. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero, asterisk, pound, A, B, C, D. Let's try two keys, see what happens. Uh, one, no, that didn't work. I pressed the one and two at the same time and didn't work. Well, uh, we don't really have that enabled in the sketch, but uh, yeah, it works great. I like it. Excellent. The library also has features to let you know a button state. So you could detect a button hold or a button press up to 10 buttons at the same time. Cool, huh? Those features have to be written into the sketch to take advantage of them. Like I've said before, it's always a good idea to take a look at any library that you might use to find clues on the methods or any coder's assumptions. Uh, most even include examples of code to do something like I've just mentioned before. But what if you had a project that needed a keypad, but you only had a single analog pin available? Or you just didn't want to use eight of your digital pins? Could we do that? The trick is using an analog input pin. Analog pins can read an analog signal from zero to five volts. Only the Arduino maps these results from zero to 1023. If we build a resistor, or rather a voltage ladder, and use the principles of a voltage divider, the varying voltages could tell us what pin was pressed. Now we couldn't do multiple button presses, but for our purposes, it might do the trick. So what is a voltage divider? A voltage divider divides the voltage in accordance to the ratio of the upper R1 and the lower R2 resistor values. If we were to place a voltmeter across R2, we would see that the greater the R2 resistor, the higher the voltage. The smaller the R2 resistor, the lower the voltage. Typically, we start by picking a maximum continuous current. But there's another catch. Somewhere I read that the Arduino analog input resistance shouldn't be greater than 10 kilo ohms. That means R1 and R2 must be around 10 kilo ohms or less each. This is good because also we want the current through the resistors to be as small as possible, say around a milliamp. We also know that the voltage will be calculated using the formula V equals the Vn, which is five volts, multiplied by R2, divided by the total of R1 plus R2, where R2 is made up from the resistors in the ladder network. Okay, that's a good starting point. So what's a resistor ladder? A resistor ladder is a technique to combine several repeating value resistors together to perform a digital to analog conversion. However, in this case, we're only concerned with voltage drop. So this can technically be called a voltage ladder. Each digital input is connected to a different rung of the ladder, which results in a different total resistance value. So as we change connection points, the total resistance and therefore the total voltage drop is either increased or decreased. If we use different resistor values for the row and columns of the ladder, we can get a unique resistance for each combination. So the combined elements create a circuit that looks like this. For example, if we press the button number five, this connects row one and column one. So current travels down through the first column resistor up to row one, then down through the row resistor to ground. So as any button is pressed, the voltage measured is the voltage drop across the resistors over the debounce components to the Arduino pin. 
What's essential for this to work is that every button press creates a unique resistance value. This can be sometimes harder than it looks. Simply picking row values to have twice the column values won't always work because you may create duplicate resistance combinations for different keys. So I came up with this little spreadsheet. So I wanted to show you the spreadsheet that I use to help create those analog values you saw there in that uh, analog value array in the uh, sketch I had. We have a limited number of uh, resistor values we can use in our Elegoo kit, kit that, uh, that was originally provided. So I had to stay within those values. And the other was I needed to come up with a resistor drop that was unique enough so that uh, I didn't have any duplicate values. So here I have two different columns here, if you will. The first uh, attempt was to use a resistance values for each of the columns. And then I would increment those with a larger step for the rows. Well, then uh, that worked out well, except for I figured if I would not use an initial column resistance, so that the first key was as low as possible, I could create a bigger spread in the resistor ladder network. So I started off with zero, and then I incremented up the columns there and the larger steps in the larger in the rows uh, as I proceeded from the first to the third, with the first row actually being zero. Then I have this little cell network here to help me identify if I accidentally came up with a duplicate because uh, the way this would work is I need to have unique resistor values for each and every keypad that was pressed. So if I accidentally created a duplicate, um, it would show up here and uh, let me know, oh, I needed to tweak my resistor values uh, one way or another. Uh, I had a uh, column, this or this box right here, let me know what the actual voltage drops were for each of those um, um, keypad presses for those corresponding resistor values. And then using the ratio of zero to 1023, uh, this, these were the values of the analog reads I was estimating would occur, which worked out really well. I went straight from here, rounded those numbers up and put those right into the sketch and they worked perfectly. Uh, I, one of the things I was striving for was to create the biggest minimum difference. And that re the reason why I needed that was I wanted to be able to have values that uh, that if they weren't close, so close that it was intolerance, they would look like one or the other. I needed to have that spread as big as possible. As as you can see with the values I picked, the minimum difference is just over eighteen. Uh, every little bit helps, and as I was tweaking it, I went through a lot of iterations to get that uh, those values. Anyway, I had this spreadsheet and I included even a, an Excel macro to help me determine the spread values and the du duplicates and all that. So if anybody's interested, I can make that available to download with the rest of the sketches that I make available. So just let me know in the comments below. Here's my revised schematic. The grid at the top of the schematic represents the keypad four x four array. On the left, I have a row of pins connected to the row resistors. Recall that I only have resistors provided with the Elogu kit. So I had to combine the 2K and 100 ohm resistor to make the 2.1 kilo ohm row resistors. Let's walk through the resistors. R3, the pin R3 for row R3 goes through the 2.1 kilo ohm resistor combination to R2. Then R2 goes through another 2.1 kilo ohm resistor to R1. R1 goes through the last 2.1 kilo ohm resistor to R0. R0 is directly connected to ground. On the right hand side, we have the column resistors. I also had to combine the 330 and the 220 ohm resistors together to create my 550 ohm column resistors. 
The column connection works similar to the row connections. C3 runs through the 550 ohm resistor to C2, and this continues all the way through to C0, which directly connects to the analog pin, A0. The array of resistors connected with the red lines, they make up the 7670 ohm resistor, which works as both a pull-up resistor and an upper part of the voltage divider. The capacitor helps debounce the keypad button presses. I should point out that the resistor values of 1.5 kilo ohms and 390 ohms with a 4.7 kilo ohm upper resistor would have worked perfectly, but I couldn't create that combination with the values of resistors I had in the kit. Okay, here's the wiring diagram. The row resistors are on the left. The column resistors are on the right, with the main upper resistor in the middle. I know it seems kind of funny, but that's where I located it. It seemed like a logical place to put it in between the two. The little jumpers are used to connect all the individual resistors and help create the ladder effect. Power and ground connects to the power and ground buses. A little jumper carries power to the top of the middle pull-up resistor and I have a ground to R0. The 0.01 microfarad cap connects the output of C0 to ground. That's part of the debound circuit. And another jumper connects the output of C0 to A0, the analog input. Let's check out the code. The code begins by defining analog pin to A0. Then an array analog values gets all the analog values that were calculated in the spreadsheet. This is followed by a char array keypad button that holds all the keypad buttons in the order of rows. I initially tried to use them as you see them above, but I got uh, a depreciated conversion error error that was weird. Um, and, but it still worked, but I couldn't get rid of the message. If anybody has a solution, let me know in the comments. The last global variable is an integer analog value size. The void setup starts by setting up the serial monitor. As far as I can tell, there isn't a direct way to get an array size in the Arduino IDE. The trick is the size of function. It returns the number of bytes in a variable type or the number of bytes occupied by an array. But for larger types like integer, which holds 16 bits or two bytes, you must divide the return value by the number of bytes in an integer. So we can calculate the array size by dividing the size of the array analog values by the size of the integer. Cool trick. The void loop begins by performing an analog read of the analog pin and then sets the value to value. <laughs> uh, I didn't have another cool uh, name to call that. Anyway, recall that if a positive five volts is seen by the analog pin, it means that no key is pressed and the return value is 1023. So the next line checks the value it sees and if it's less than a thousand, it assumes that the that an analog key press is made, and it runs the analog key press subroutine and passes along the value. Else, it'll just continue looping. That's it. The analog key press subroutine starts by calling a debounce function. The debounce function begins with a small delay and then reads the analog pin again. If the difference between the now value and the previous value is greater than five, it takes another tiny delay and gets another analog read from the analog pin. Finally, it returns the current value. Back at the analog key press subroutine, we take the return value and we compare it to the analog values 
in the analog value array. If the difference is within tolerance of five, we send the corresponding keypad button from the keypad button array. But before leaving the loop, we start yet another loop, a little while loop, as we wait for the keypad button to be released. That's it. Let's upload the code and test it out. As you can see, this circuit is set up with only one single pin going to the circuit board and the power and ground wire going to the Arduino. And then the resistor array setup, or sorry, the resistor ladder setup with the pins of the keypad going to the keypad, which I have taped down here, otherwise it kept sliding around. But otherwise, oh yes, and then I had the a single capacitor here for debouncing. It helps a little. Uh, I end up having to add uh, some debouncing code to uh, make that work a little better. But uh, you know, overall, I'm very pleased with the circuit. It came out really well. All right, we're uploading it. Now we're going to go check out the serial monitor. And then we're going to press some buttons. One, two, three, A, four, five, six, B, seven, eight, nine, C, zero, oh, sorry, star, zero, pound sign, and then D. It worked. Excellent. That worked perfectly. Well, that's it for this lesson. I hope you've enjoyed learning a little about the keypad membrane switch module using the eight digital pins and the keypad library and the single analog pin no library version. If you like this sketch, be sure to let me know in the comments section below. I'll have additional links for other interesting videos and the code for this project in the show notes below. Join me next time for lesson 12, DHT11, temperature and humidity sensor. If you like this video, don't forget to rate and subscribe. I'll try to put out a new video each week. Thanks and see you next time.